The Grey Spirit, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you find the things you need. Lady Ada, what are you looking for on DigiKey.com this week? Okay, I'm actually doing a twofer um, because I have two modules that I want to swap around that use the ESP32. So one of them went in a line. So let's go to that first. Let's go to the computer and I'll talk about this module that... So, we use the ESP32 for a bunch of things, including this airlift uh, technique, which uh, Arduino came up with originally, where you load firmware onto the ESP32, and then it becomes an SPI client, and then you can use that as a Wi-Fi chipset. Really great when you have something like, you know, RP2040 or an Atmega chip, something you want, or, you know, NR52. You want to add Wi-Fi as a coprocessor, um, you'd use something like this. So the good news is that, um, you know, historically, you know, we've used um, the classic ESP room. It's this, like, kind of chunky but very serviceable module from Espressif. It's very inexpensive. It uses the ESP32, uh, 4 megabytes of flash, no PS RAM, but it has a built-in antenna, and it's, like, it's solid. Like, it's, it's like a beast, right? This isn't everything. Um, so we have the um, shield, and we have the feather wing. Although the feather wing is a little bit of a tight fit, uh, you, you does work. And then for the itsy bitsy, um, we use this Ublox module, uh, the Ublox Nina, which I, which is again also used by Arduino on their like Nano Connect or Nano Wi-Fi boards. And what's nice is that it's extremely compact. Okay, but you know what I'm about to say. So the problem is, is that this module, I just got to notice like last week that it is under last time by. This is the one I think I'm using. Yeah, so they still have a bunch in stock, but it's last time by, um, which means I can put in one last order, uh, but they're no longer going to be making this. So, you know, uh, thanks for the warning, and it is in stock, which is better, again, better than a lot of chips that we've we've dealt with in the last two years, where we get a last time buy, and they're like, but we don't know when we're going to get them to you. So, uh, you know, I'm going to pick up a couple just to, to kind of ease ease the transition, but I have to find a replacement for this, and I want it to fit on um, that itsy, itsy bitsy wing, which is very small. And then, um, likewise... Um, I've got the uh, Easy Link. Oh, can we go to the um, overhead real fast? I'll show this again. Uh, I've got this Easy Link board, and when I put this together, um, I used the ESP32 Pico module, which is an ESP32 with eight megabytes of flash, two megabytes of PS RAM, and it's extremely compact. But it's a little bit more expensive, and I'll show I'll show the pricing differences for all these. So I basically want to find. You know, I'm, I'm like doing two things. One, I want to find what's the best module to replace that itsy bitsy wing with the Nina W10 series that's end of line. So a very compact module, maybe it's this one. And I also want to find a replacement for this module um, that maybe is a little bit less expensive because I don't need eight megabytes of flash in the PS RAM. So one second, I'm going to just quickly open up something on my computer, and then we'll switch over. All right. I'll ask a question. Where ask a question. Will the ESP32 C3 support ESP SPI? It doesn't yet. Sorry, I'm going to get distracted. Hold on. Uh, Bluetooth. Easy link. Okay. So now I'm going to open up both files so we can look at them. Okay. So uh, let's go back to the computer. Top. Let me hold on. Let me uh, open up the T docu. Okay, so this is the um, ESP Easy Link. So the one thing is, is that I really want to keep the width of the board the same because I'm trying to match the original Easy Link, which was longer, but it had this nice width. I want to make it pin compatible because it's you know very easy to. Um, swap it out. And again, um, this module was, uh, let me see if I can open the V2. This is the version using the original, uh, hold on. Uh oh. This is the um, original module using the um, CSR chipset. Let me turn on TDocu. 
Uh, so you can see it's extremely long, but extremely skinny. So it's like it, it you know, it, it did kind of just keep going, keep going, 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 going. But it was um, many stories, but it's it's nice and compact. So I did like that when I um, did this transition. This is a little bit squatter, but it has that same footprint. Um, and then likewise, I'm cheating because I'm showing ahead. But this is the itsy bitsy wing, and you can see how skinny that. Um, Nina W is, I mean, it has to fit between these two, I think, um, you know, 0. 0.6, let's see, this is uh, five, yeah, this is 0. 0.6 inches apart, so it's, you know, the size of a, of a large dip chip. Um, so, you know, this one, again, um, don't need a lot of, for neither of them, we don't need uh, a lot of PS RAM or RAM or flash, two or four megabytes is going to be okay, we don't need PS RAM. Of course, I'm always interested in going with the lowest cost part available. Um, I do want a built-in antenna. Um, I don't necessarily need a UFL antenna option, but like, sure, later if, you know, if that's available. But uh, basically, like, most people want a built-in antenna. And to do this, I actually recommend um, going with the ESP product selector. Now, DigiKey has all the parts in stock, but the ESP product selector is just a little bit more um, specialized, again, for those ESP modules. And I found this is a good way to kind of see the lay of the land. And then I go to, you know, of course, you can't buy from Espresso directly. You go to the distributor, you go to DigiKey. Um, so let's let's start now. Okay, so for um, what I want, so I definitely want Wi-Fi. I do not want, well, I want Bluetooth Classic for that one board, which means I have to use, uh, for the easy link, I have to use the ESP32 Again, for the itsy bitsy, I don't need Bluetooth. However, right now the airlift code only works on the classic ESP32. So we're going to use only the classic ESP32. Um, I can't use the 8266, no classic, uh, ditto for the S2, C3, S3, and, and C2. So um, that uh, reduces the list down to 72 pieces. Next up, uh, system on a chip or module. I want the module because I want it to be like the FCC stamped and everything tinned and ready to go. I want to just place it. So we're going to go with a module. Um, status, you know, I want mass production. Uh, core, I don't really care if it's single or dual core. Antenna, I do want it built in. I want it to be PCB antenna. IPEX is the pluggable antenna. Um, okay, so let's see what we've got here. Maybe I can't can't quite reduce that. This is unhideable, huh? That's okay. Um, okay, so we've got all these modules uh, down here, and the thing that's most important to me is size. So I'm going to search by size and uh, moving up. And then um, you can see there's a couple options with PS RAM, and uh, you know all of them are going to have some you know, different flash, different PS RAM. Another thing to note is they all certainly have different GPIO availability. So just keep in mind all the modules that are available for the ESP. Like each time you change package, like there's four pins that swap in and out. So just be aware. Like GPIO like 10 and 15, 10, 17, 18, 19, 20. Those, those numbers tend to kind of flip around. Okay, so these are all in production, and let's look at the sizes. So the Pico is definitely um, the smallest. It's got a uh, 13 millimeter by 16 millimeter size, whereas the Mini, remember there's the Pico Mini and there's the Mini. The Pico Mini is 16 millimeters, 17 millimeters tall. The mini one is 19 millimeters tall. So for visualization, I've actually started, I started adding these here. So this is the um, uh, U-Blocks, which is actually the smallest by far. You can see they, they're, they're really good at making extremely compact designs. They put the pads on the bottom. They use like BGA parts. I don't know what the heck they did. I, I've never uncapped it, but it's extremely compact. This is the Pico which is again, 17 millimeters tall. And this is the mini. Note that they're not, you know, they're, this is the same width, but it's taller. It actually has the same number of pins, basically. It's just like a little stretched out. So this one, um, the chip inside, the, the 
the chip that's in it, the ESP32 Pico chip, has the PS RAM and flash all on one die. I think the Mini has maybe the flash is separated or something. It's like it's a little separated. And then this is the Warum, which um, definitely has the flash and then a spot for memory um, separates. So this is kind of the, and this uses SOIC flash. So they, get, they tend to get less expensive as you get bigger um, because you don't have to have as tight integration. But of course, they're, they're bigger. Um, although they all pretty much have the same RF performance within reason. So the, the thing about this is, um, you know, this is the itsy bitsy wing. I'll turn off the bottom layer. And the, you know, really nothing beats this um, U Blocks Nano. I could fit the Pico. You know, it would be a tight fit, but it would fit right there in the middle. And then this would fit too. It's the same width, but I have to really start squishing all the parts back. Maybe even go with a double sided design. So this is a little bit tougher. Um, we'll look at the price differences for these. So if I go to, uh, to DigiKey and I look for ESP32, and then I want transceivers and modems. I only want the active ones, and I only want ones that are using uh, the ESP32 chipset. Not the S2, not the S3. There are a couple different variations of the uh, ESP32. Um, and I want it from Espressif. I'm going to use the Espressif modules because, again, the U-blocks are discontinued. And I want it to be a module. I want an antenna included uh, trace antenna. I don't want the IPEX or UFL. Okay, so, and then is there a way to get just the modules? I don't know if modules are... Well, this says module, but it's not really module. I'm going to stick with this. Um, so if you search by price, if you sort by price, the mini module is is kind of the least expensive. Um, it's about 250 in quantity. And then there's a version that has the uh, UFL antenna, if you like. Um, there's the H4 version. This is uh, the same, but a little bit earlier. So it's it's not recommended, I believe. It's, it's kind of not end of line, but it's like, slowly being discontinued. And then the room is actually a little bit more expensive. So it turns out it's actually cheaper for me to go with the mini module. The Pico um, is all the way down here is more expensive. It's $4 in quantity. And it's more expensive because it's got that PS RAM in it and it's got double the flash. All things being equal, you're always going to pay more for, well, you tend to pay more for more integration. In this case, it's interesting. It's actually less expensive, but you're definitely going to pay more for flash and PS RAM, like those, those cost 50 cents no matter what. So it's not, not surprising that double it and you know your price basically goes up a um, dollar fifty uh, per. But the mini module is actually kind of like you know very affordable here. It's 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 inexpensive. It's two fifty, and there's a version with and without the antenna. So you know I think if I can, f you know it's it might actually be worth it for a dollar fifty to move from this U-Blocks to this module that's $2.50 and maybe even go double-sided. You know, going double-sided is or like going to much smaller components is always a little bit of a risk, but if you can save a dollar fifty on your build material cost and, you know, your process only ends up being a dollar more, it might be worth it. Um, and then, of course, the um, War Room will, like, totally not fit, so... You know, I have that choice. So I, when I when I do my sizing for modules, I like to pick out between them. And then likewise, um, for the Easy Link, let's see. I can uh, I can show some sizing differences. So ESP32, and then I have these all in my library, all the the mini sizes. So this is the Pico, and then the Mini, which would just be a little taller. It wouldn't make the size any wider, and I'm okay with making the board a little uh, taller as well. And then one uh, side note is, um, in case you're curious, the ESP32 C3 Mini is actually the same size as the ESP32 Pico. So if you would like to um, 
if it is possible you use the C3, oh, I don't have it here. If you would like to use the C3, though, uh, in the product selector, you can, oh, no, wrong product selector, sorry. Yeah. In the product selector, the Pico Mini is 13 by 13 millimeters wide by 16 millimeters tall. If we change chipsets to be the C3, the C3 Mini is likewise 13 by 16. So, so the words Pico and Mini, just be aware they don't always mean exactly the same thing between chipsets. That was surprising to me when I saw that the C3 Mini is the same size as the ESP32 Pico. But again, I can't use the C3 at this time, so I'm going to go with the Mini 1 and 4. There's lots in stock. They're $250 a piece. They'll do the job well. It's actually a little cheaper than the room module. Uh, it's got a built-in antenna, and it'll fit in both of the boards that I'm designing for. That's a great search. Wait.